Crypto Vibes Podcast, your weekly recap of news of what's happened in the world of crypto and Web3. We aggregate news throughout the week to provide a condensed version. It's definitely not all of the news for the week. And what didn't make the show is available on our website with show notes at CryptoPodcast.xyz. The show is released every Saturday. It is week 42 of 2022, episode 32. I am your host, Neil Alonzo, and we hope you've had a really good week. And before we dive into everything, we do have to give some disclosures. We are not financial advisors, wealth managers, lawyers, brokers, or CPAs. None of this should be construed as investment advice. There is so much happening each week in crypto and Web3. And we always say it, and it's become kind of common for us and cliche for us, but the news in crypto and Web3 is a moving target, and this week is no different. Our thought for this week is in the form of regulation and adoption. There's so much regulation happening at such a rate as it's coinciding with adoption and building that it's colliding. It's almost like a perfect storm of situations where you are going to have to build in a way that you don't necessarily know how the rules are going to be in the next six months and ultimately how the rules will be in the next six years. But it's almost an agile roadmap that you're going to have to have and a way to be flexible with how things can roll simply by regulation and adoption. This week kicking off is BNY Mellon entering crypto happened last week, but Custodia's Caitlin Long blasts the Fed over that rationale because in layman's terms, Long has been waiting two and a half years for the decision on her bank's application for a master account with the Federal Reserve. What does make you wonder, the powers that be, how will the decision-making and filtering process, basically governance of our governance. And in step with that, VC and investment firms have been increasingly active in DAO governance. There's a thread on Twitter that's really well done by BlockWorks Research, and you can find that in our show notes. Ripple obtained long-sought documents of former SEC official who declared Ethereum not a security. So this is really a big deal in the case of Ripple and the SEC. And we do have to agree with others that this case will become a bellwether of sorts for the crypto community. And not all news is coming from direct crypto or Web3 sources, but in the case of Hollywood and Entertainment, Variety.com published a piece called Inside the Hazy Future of Blockchain. It's interesting to get their point of view on things. And I say they because they're a little bit outside and removed from the direct crypto and Web3 communities, such as, let's say, Coindesk, Blockworks, Decrypt.co, and others that produce and source a lot of the content and news that we report on. But yeah, it's interesting to see the different areas and verticals that are adopting these technologies and the pains that they're having to go through. The big launch this week was Aptos and its market debut. We have a number of different leaks in our show notes, so I'll just run through some of the headlines. More than one billion worth of APT traded in first week. Also, Aptos token plummets 40% after APT airdrop for early network participants. And there's a lot of concern over their tokenomics. And in step with all of that, they're going to have NFTs coming, and it may put their network scalability claims to the test. Those were just a handful of some of the headlines as a result of Aptos coming out. So please check them out. Microsoft says it's developing a mobile game store to compete with Google and Apple. This is kind of a big deal, in our opinion, and not to be lost on this, but... Netflix is also developing a cloud gaming studio as well. So the gaming side of things is really heating up in a way that we believe that blockchain and crypto has added more reinforcement to it, especially in step with all things Web3. Because again, if you were thinking about Web3 as the next version of read, write, and own, the ownership element and the ability to generate these new financial systems is attractive in a number of ways. As we've mentioned in a lot of our previous podcasts, utility is starting to be realized in actually how it's being delivered. But more so than that, NFTs and a lot of the labels that are placed on the features and projects being worked on in crypto are going to start seeing more of what it can be. But it takes time. This was a rather catchy headline. Venture FOMO returns as investors chase artificial intelligence deals. So this was on the information.com. And it's a really cool read because 
they're equating that artificial intelligence to seeing more investment than crypto, let's say in the last few months. But here's the thing, artificial intelligence has a big hand in blockchain and Web3 technology. And our MetaMask adds instant bank to crypto transfers. Crypto wallet MetaMask is making it easier for users to turn their fiat into crypto through an integration with fintech firm Sardine. We're starting to see a lot more action in the area of these, I guess you'd call them connection services, or they're really becoming utilities of their own in the crypto space, such as Sardine. Plaid also introduced, and the headline says, Plaid's new Web3 wallet onboard tool will support MetaMask, Coinbase, and Ledger. So we have a couple articles on this that you can check out in our show notes. Coinbase is threatening to sue crypto traders who profited from pricing glitch. A thousand users in the Republic of Georgia made wild profits on Coinbase pricing glitch. Now the U.S.-based crypto exchange wants the money back. (laughs) That's kind of a funny twist of events. It will be interesting to see that a glitch in the Coinbase system and how that would work out if they do go to court over this. And not all funding is private equity or VCs, but Stanford wants a bigger piece of Silicon Valley's top VC funds. This is by their endowment chief. This was also an article on the information.com. Another sign that the old world will not just be there on the sidelines, Fidelity's crypto platform to add Ether trading for institutional clients. This week, Binance denies allegations it intends to use users' Uniswap tokens for voting. This is as a result of Binance currently retaining 5.9% of the voting power on Uniswap, second only to venture capital giant A16Z, which controls 6.7%. DeFi exchange Mago Markets will soon start refunding users for the $114 million exploit. And in a series of NFT news, NFT creators have earned $1.8 billion in royalties to date. The byline on this article says just 10 NFT issuers have collectively amassed 27% of all creator royalties, but this concentration of wealth raises questions about centralization and opportunity. Yeah, it's a pretty valid point. But who's going to answer those questions? And do we know the right questions to ask, right? Warner Bros. releases Ethereum-compatible Lord of the Rings NFTs. So for those of you there who want your precious, check out this link. Rarible is expanding NFT aggregator with token rewards that, quote, can't be gamed. And the last bit of news for this week is Solana could get enforceable NFT royalties via new Metaplex standard. Now, we're big fans of creators receiving their royalties from our position and our point of view, because we believe if you are going to take the time to create anything, especially in the space of NFTs, that the royalty should be mandated not an option. So this too is part of the growing pains of all things crypto and blockchain and Web3 to see how we're going to start enforcing a lot of these smart contracts, a lot of the things that we thought were supposed to be inherently secure, the things that we believe are going to make NFTs and Web3 and crypto better. Well, that's it for this week. Again, it's not all the news for this week. We have more in our show notes at CryptoPodcast.xyz. We'd like to thank Good Soup Music for that intro and outro song. This show is produced by Vocal Visual and Wizard Cats. I am your host, Neil Alonzo. We are cautiously optimistic and hopefully pessimistic on crypto. Have a great weekend. <laughs>